Hi everybody and thanks for viewing this YouTube fly tying tutorial. For this video I'm not going to be tying a specific specific fly, instead I'm going to be concentrating on some tips and techniques when using lead wire. This is some lead wire, this is something that uh, you'll use on a lot of nymphs and streamers. Whenever you're adding lead wire it's mainly for one of two reasons, either to add weight and or to increase the width of that body for that fly that you're tying. There's three common sizes that we use in uh, for trout flies. One is a .015 or 15 thousandths. One's an 020. You can see it's just a hair thicker than that 015. And then finally, the thickest one that I typically will use is .025 or 25 thousandths, and it's definitely the thickest of the three. For um for the the majority of the videos today, or for the majority of this demonstration today, I'll be using .020. I'll be using it with the spool in my hand, though I do want to point out that I have a material bobbin. looks like this. And it's really easy to use, though mine looks kind of like it's in a bird's nest right now. These are slick, they are nice, they are definitely applicable to fly tying. They help out at times, though it seems like it's just much quicker for me to just grab this spool and use it this way. Alright, with that said, the first comment that I'm going to make is, whenever you're cutting this stuff off once you have it wrapped around the shank of the hook, you have a couple choices. You can always just pull it away, you can kind of twist it off with your fingers, or you can cut it off. As my buddy Tim Abbott loves to make fun of me with some of these videos, make sure you're using an old pair of scissors for that. This is a pair of scissors that I just received recently from somebody, and um, they're, they're a decently sharp pair, but I have so many other pairs that I use for different applications that this is now turning into, this pair is turning into the pair that I'll use whenever I'm trimming away wire materials, such as lead wire, or such as some ultra wire that I'm using for other flies. So make sure you have a pair of scissors close by, um, in case you ever want to trim them off. Make sure they're not your good scissors, however. Alright, the first thing I want to just focus on is, whenever you're applying this, there's a couple different ways that, that you can typically um, you can do this. Whenever I've taught classes, I typically will see people grab their grab the end of it with their right hand and wrap it around the hook. And that's not a bad thing at all because it allows you, if, if you want to trim it with scissors, to trim here, but then you have this extra piece here that tends to get wasted a lot unless you continue wrapping that around. So whenever you first apply lead wire to the shank, I recommend holding it kind of like you're holding a spool of thread. Hold onto the spool, Grab the end with your left hand and wrap on the desired amount. Now at this point, you can either trim away the excess from the spool or if you just want to pinch it with your fingernail, and you can pinch it away leaving just a little piece remaining. At that point, what I typically do is grab my right hand, twist that piece around so it's now flush with everything else, and then I'll hold on to the bulk of the wire and I'll turn it which you'll see it just slowly starting to pull that long piece from my hand. I'll grab both ends, turn them in opposite directions, and now I have my lead wire body. Now if you notice, prior to uh, me putting my lead wire on, I did not build a base of thread, and I typically won't. Uh, it's something I have not done. Um, I, I've, I've done it a couple times with certain flies over the years, but for the most part, for most nymphs and woolly buggers and other streamers, I will put the wire directly on, on the base, and I don't worry too much about it otherwise. I've heard some stories about that, that lead rusting or just different things happening, but for the most part, I've had very little trouble, and um, the, the majority of streamers that I tie, I'm probably filtering through within a few years anyway, so I'm not too concerned about anything going on with the hook. At this point, th this is where I'll typically tie on my thread. Because this is able to be moved, the lead wire, I'll just typically move it out of the way, grab my thread, place it a couple um, hook eyes back, and then slide my lead wire up to it. I don't like crowding the front of my fly. I like it, I like it having a very, you know, a, a really nice area with very few materials whenever I'm tying off because I really believe um, whenever you look at the heads of certain flies, the messier the head is or the more clumped up it is, it just doesn't look as appealing and as, you know, aesthetically appealing to, um, to me. The fish probably don't mind, but I do as a fly tire. So I like to push it up until about this point, so I'm just a couple hook eyes back. Then I'll continue pushing forward with my left hand as I start to wrap back. I don't put a lot there, but I will, when I get to the back, just snug it up. So now I have it snug between the, where I tied in and where it's now resting. And it's at this point that you have a couple options. Now, sometimes I will build this up a little bit 
because I want that transition going from the tail towards the body to be smooth. I will definitely transition it whenever I'm tying nymphs, or at least I'll attempt to. I don't necessarily need the, the greatest transition, but if I'm going to be tying a buyout body or something along those lines, you need that transition. So let me zoom in. I'll show you exactly what I've done here. I'll get it so it's a little clearer for you. You can now start to see it looks kind of like a, a cigar taper. And it tapers up and then back down towards the tail of the fly. I haven't done it at the head. Occasionally I will if I want that taper going back down. Because the thorax is tied in here, it's something that's not necessarily required as much. Now at this point, you can add on your other materials. Do you have to put those transitions at the front and the back? Absolutely not. Do they add more appeal to the fly? Definitely not. Could they make it look a little bit more like the natural? Absolutely. Now the one question I get asked is about this little piece right here. It's going to be tough to see, but it's that little piece that's sticking up, the piece that I cut before. That is a piece, depending on what you're tying, that little thing can really get in people's way. Sometimes you'll see it sticking out through the body of a fly. Whenever you have that little piece, my advice is just take your finger and push it down. Because this is lead wire, it pushes down, it smooths down really easily. You can see I just did it right there. The other thing that you can, you can do is just wrap over it a few times and push it back towards the back of the fly. I'll show you what I've just done. Kind of like that. So I ha now have a little gap in there and I can just wrap over it. My head back to the, towards the head. I'm going to show you a couple other little tips that you can, uh, you can do at this point. There's some flies, specifically some stone flies, that call for a wider fly. And this is a great technique that you can use in making certain nymphs a little wider. I have a pair of, of um, pliers here. You can see they're completely smooth on the inside. I'm going to make sure my hook eyes, you know, pointing forward, my, my points on the bottom. I'm just going to go straight in and squeeze down. Now I didn't do it the whole way to the front and the back, but you can see I've now just widened the fly a little bit. Not a lot, but just enough to make, give it a little bit more of a side profile. Then when you look at it from the side, you can see that it's no longer increasing the diameter on the top and the bottom. A lot of nymphs have that more of these a, a more of a wider body, and that's a great little trick that you can do to, to have that wide body. I recommend widening, I recommend um, pressing down with these pliers once you have it tied on. Sometimes if you attempt to do that prior to having all of your thread there, these little pieces of lead will just go flying everywhere. Now that I've widened it, I can go back, add on my tail, dub my body, and tie off my head, thorax, whatever else I have going on. All right, so that's, uh, those are a few beginning techniques and tips using lead wire. What I'm going to do is just reset all this stuff, and um, I'm next going to show you how I tie in lead wire with bead heads and with cone heads. Okay, I have everything reset. Uh, now I have the same hook, except there's a bead head on the end. Uh, bead heads really don't change too much from the initial process. Like before, I'm going to grab the thread, or grab the, uh, the spool of lead wire, with my left hand, the end. I typically, do, I typically place around 10 wraps. You can see I just got rid of it with my hand. Whenever I'm tying bead heads, I'll typically push the bead towards it to help slide everything together, pull the bead back. Then I have my two ends and I'm going to twist them in opposite directions. I have the one closest to the eye and then next, the body. Then I'm going to push them towards the bead just to keep all my wrap, keep all the wraps together. Take my fingernail, push them down a little bit, and I'm finished. Now, the most common mistake that I see people do with this, some beads are cut from the inside, and whenever they're cut, it seems like a perfect spot to just put the lead directly right next to the bead. I am not going to say you can't do that because the moment I say you can't do that, I'm sure there's about 20 reasons why certain individuals do. However, like I mentioned before, I like having a little bit of room whenever I'm tying off the head of the, the head of the fly. So once I have this lead wire on, what I'll do is back it off, wrap some thread close to the eye, get it out of there, and then wrap down a little bit more. So now I'm leaving about one bead back. Uh, from the original placement of the bead. At this point, I'm now just going to wrap over the lead wire 
and begin to lock it in place. Now I have a few options, um, but it'll typically be like before, I'll decide whether I want to build a little ramp towards the back. If I do, I'll just quickly come back there. And this could be a good instance where you would want to use maybe 6 aught thread so you can build up that ramp a little quicker. I have 8 aught right now. Maybe you'd want to build a ramp in the front, leading back down. You can do that as well. But it's really, you know, your option. The biggest thing I want, I'd like you to take from this is that I really like to keep that little gap between the bead and the lead. By leaving that gap there, it just allows me a little bit more room for tying off some materials and then finally finishing the head of the fly. It gives it just a, a little bit of a cleaner look and a cleaner profile when completing the fly. All right, next I'm going to um, share with you a cone head, which is a little bit different than the bead head. Transitioning from the bead head, now on my hook I have a cone head. There's a couple different ways that guys will start this cone head or possibly finish. I noticed a lot of tires will put some thread at the very end of the hook right before the eye and try to build, and try to build a nice transition point going from the eye towards the cone. Um, it, it will definitely like look a little bit better than placing the cone directly against the eye. Um, so this is really something if you're into the aesthetics of the fly, you may want to consider doing that. However, if you look at any of the flies that I tie, I rarely do that, possibly 1% of the time. Only if I'm doing a, if I'm, I'm tying a fly with a cone head and I really am tying it just for presentation purposes. The other 99% of the time, it's definitely for a fishing application and I don't worry about that whatsoever. The one thing you have to remember with a cone head is that whenever it's originally placed on, it's kind of, kind of loose. You can see this just flopping around. So whenever I place my lead wire on it, I'm going to keep that in mind. I'm going to apply it just like I have applied all the previous ones. Wrap around so I have everything looking the exact same way. I'll press it up against that cone head. But in this case, I'm not going to pull it back to leave room for my material. If I pull it back to leave room, I definitely have a nice little gap in there that I could finish off the head of the fly. However, whenever you're tying off a cone head, you really want the, the rest of your fly, the head and the, the, the rest of the body and the thorax coming off of it, you really want it looking like it's transitioning from that cone. You don't want it just, uh, just really tied close to the hook shank because it would look a little awkward. So instead, I'm going to take all my lead wire, push it up, make sure it's tight against that cone head. Grab my thread, and I'm not going to tie it on here because, again, then I'm going to be building up a little bit more towards the head. I'm just going to come back to the location where uh, the lead ends. I'm going to tie my thread in right there. Now that thread's butting up against the lead. If I want, I can make a couple wraps in here just to secure the lead. And now finish, if I'm going to be placing on a tail or any other uh, materials, I can add those in and work my way accordingly towards the front of the hook. Uh, that's my choice um, by placing the lead wire up that way. I really think it just works out smooth. Um, and also, please keep in mind, if you're using a tungsten cone head plus lead wire, you are adding a tremendous amount of weight to this hook, and this fly is going to be going immediately to the bottom. So just keep that in mind, depending on the water that you're going to be fishing. All right, now that I've shown you this one, I have just a, a couple more tips and techniques. So let me get everything reset and I'll get into the last couple. All right, earlier in this video, I brought out a pair of pliers and I was showing you how you can smash down the lead to create just a little bit of a wider body when tying a nymph. I'm gonna show you another technique that a lot of tires in central Pennsylvania have used over the years. I specifically remember um, a couple guys associated with Joe Humphreys that have used this method before because they want to add just a little bit of width to the body of the nymph. However, they don't want to sacrifice that. They, they don't want to in increase the diameter of the body. So by doing that, what I've done, and, and you could do this really simply, taking some of the O2O lead wire and I've trimmed them into little sections. Now I've left these intentionally longer just so I can show you that it, it's okay if you, if you keep them longer. Just a quick way to, to remedy that once you have them tied in. What I'm going to do is take the first one, I'm going to tie it against the side of the hook facing the camera. I'm going to leave room near my, near my eye to tie off. I'm going to tie back approximately, we'll say halfway, and I'm going to leave that edge hang off. Now here's a view from the top. 
and you can see I've just basically increased the um, the width by a little bit less than three quarters of the width of the original hook shank. Now, if I want to increase it a little bit more dramatically, I can add something like 0.025 lead wire to the side. If I want to do something a little less, I can go with the 0.015 lead wire. It's really based on the, the natural you're trying to match. At this point, I'm just going to wrap back to that section. Now, I'm just going to keep the, the hook sideways. I have another piece of lead wire to add on to the other side. Adding the second piece is typically the most difficult for tires because as you start to add this in, the thread will really bunch against it and it will want to swirl that lead wire around the hook. So just make sure you're holding it in place with your left hand. And if you see that lead starting to turn around the hook, you can just grab it and adjust it back accordingly. Now I'm going to head back towards the eye. I'm going to build just a hair of a transition point there and give you a quick peek at what's going on. As I show you the 360, you can see they are, based on how I've tied them on, I'm not giving anything up to the diameter of the, the fly at all. I've added very little to the top, very little to the bottom. I left these long, and I don't want them too long. I typically don't let these pieces extend anywhere past the hook point. So by leaving these ones intentionally long, I'll just show you how easy it is to just now grab your material scissors, pull them up, and you can actually twist them back and forth. But I'm just going to trim them. I have a couple little tabs there. What I'm going to do with those tabs, I'm not going to try to build the transition point with those tabs that way. I'm actually going to take those two ends and kind of push them under the hook or on top of the hook. They'll want to go one way. and In this case, it looks like they kind of both came towards the top of the hook. So what that allows me to do now is just build that rear transition point. So I'm going to build up my thread just a little bit right at those tips. And now I have a nice transition point going from the tail towards the body of this fly. Here's the side profile. It looks pretty normal. It just looks like I have a little bit of junk tied onto the hook. But when I show you the view from the top, you can see how I've definitely widened this nymph. And now I can turn it into whatever pattern I want. Typically, I'll widen stone flies. Um, and, and that's just a really easy tip, a really easy trick to widen that fly and make your pattern appear a little bit differently than all the other fishermen that are fishing in that same stream as you. So keep that tip in mind. All right, with that said, that is going to end this fly tying tutorial, giving you some tips and techniques to use lead wire. I hope you gained a little bit of new insight towards this. And there's lots of other different strategies I've seen guys do, such as placing lead wire on, tying it down, wrapping it back without even cutting it. And if you have any additional ones to share, please do so in the, in the comments section of this YouTube page because there are so many other great tips and techniques out there. I don't necessarily utilize all of them, but if they work for you, I'd really appreciate if you could share it with some other tires who might be looking for a few additional tips. All right, with that said, thanks for viewing this YouTube fly tying tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to email me at tkamisa at gmail.com or as mentioned earlier, you can always leave those comments at the bottom of this YouTube page. Thanks again, everybody.